today on Doug and Lisa. Canadian entrepreneur, philanthropist, and former dragon W. Brett Wilson on Redefining Success. A roving reporter returns, Nidu Garsha is back from Haiti. 10 Things Every Woman Should Have in Her Closet. And a preview of the new production of Fiddler on the Roof. Hello and welcome to the Doug and Lisa show. I'm going to be Doug next week. Next week? Yeah, we are. What, what was it? 980. We're at 980. 74. Whatever. We're very close to getting 1,000 likes. And that means when we get 1,000, Doug is dressing up like me. I'm dressing up like him, and we're doing the whole show like that. Absolutely. Your dreams come true. My dream. Yes, if only I could be Lisa, I dreamt one day. <laughs> nightmare. That's a nightmare, not a dream. No, that would be a good dream. You're fantastic. I really like you. It'll be fun. Thank you, Doug. I like you, too. If I could be half this pretty, I'll be happy. But that's what I'm scared about, though, is that you're going to be prettier than me. I am going to pull out every stop I can to be prettier than <laughs> you. You do got some beautiful eyes and I'm, your eyeliner. And I'm, I'm serious. I'm recruiting anybody out there in the fashion, beauty, makeup, in the hair industry that wants to help. I'm, I'm, I really need this. <laughs> well, we have Toby at uh, Impulse Oh, right. Oh, yes, of course. So she's going to dress me? She's going to dress you. But this oh, awesome. week, she talked a little bit more about, um, you know, 10 pieces that women need in their closet at all times. I so should pay attention to this. Let's go check that out. I'm with Toby Tanis from Influence Clothing in Orchard Park Mall. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. How do you do? <laughs> okay, so today, what are you going to be teaching us? This is really fun. This is a style lesson. This is 10 pieces, 10 pieces, and we're doing it on a very general basis, but 10 pieces that will make getting dressed really easy. And by no means am I saying that these are the only 10 pieces that you need in your closet. But if you have these, it, it's easy to get dressed every day. So let's start with the bottoms, Lisa. <laughs> Do you like how I've just taken over? Yeah, sorry. Okay, come in. Come in here. So uh, a great maxi skirt okay. or maxi dress. This can be a maxi skirt or maxi dress. And if you can see with this one, I don't have a hand. See the nice slit on that side? So oh, yeah. this can go from day to night. Something like this, right? Something basic and long that's going to work with any of the tops that you have. Okay. We'll talk about those in a moment. A fun pair of shorts in this season, the crochet short yeah, is everywhere. Gorgeous. This is kind of fun because it's golden. Mm -hmm. So this can be dressed up with a heel or it can be done really casually. And then just a casual pair of shorts, you know, maybe cargo shorts or cutoffs or just something that you can just throw on and uh, be kind of slouchy with. Okay, I have to get, hand you this microphone because I need two hands. Okay, so as far as tops go. Okay. Something a little on the dressy side. Again, this can have sleeves, this cannot have sleeves, just something a little bit more blousy, something basic, your basic white t-shirt or off-white. Everyone needs a graphic tee in yeah. their closet this summer because it's, it's just fun and I'm gonna show you how it pairs with everything. And then some kind of cardigan or kimono. You wore one of these last week. I yes. got so many compliments from that. Yeah, they're just fun. But here's, here's where it gets fun. So, um, you're gonna hold these on you. Okay. I'm gonna hold this on me. So now I've got I've got a cute skirt and a blouse. You've got cute shorts and a blouse. That works. I've got a cute skirt and a t-shirt. Okay. T-shirt works with your shorts. Even this graphic tee, right? And then that's also gonna be just a fun to casual down the shorts. And then any of these work with this kimono again, just for something to throw on. So it's it, that that makes it really easy. For that, um, as far as a jacket goes, a jean jacket or an army jacket, mm -hmm. <laughs> this boat went over there. Um, <laughs> Have you had some champagne cocktails <laughs> this morning? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I want one. Um, but again, this work this works with everything. And okay. then you need a couple of dresses. We need something casual. Yeah. Because we live in the Okanagan, mm -hmm. and we can just throw this on under our little army jacket or under our kimono, and then something that has a little punch. Yeah. You can wear this. With, with a basic casual jacket, but you could also wear this if you were going to a wedding or a summer party. Yeah. So I think 10 pieces, right? You've got some shorts. And again, these fancier shorts could be a little skirt, right. something like that, just something that's gonna be a little bit dressier than um, a pair of cutoffs. Any awesome. questions? No, so you're saying that I can just throw everything in my closet and just get 10 items? <laughs> No, that would be no fun. So, but I'm saying these are 10 items that if you have these 10 items, right? And what is it? We're talking four tops, a couple of over things and three bottoms. Yeah. You can see how many ways this can go, right? right. Like you could even wear 
um, if you were going somewhere where you didn't want to have bare arms, you can even have that under the little dress, right? Oh, okay. Something like that. Then you can start to mix in some more fun things. The bralette. Br bralette. <laughs> the bralette is very big this season. But um, the dress I happened to pull, do you see how it's really open in the arm? Yeah, I noticed that. So this is a big trend this season, too, with tank okay. tops. Um, so you wear a bralette underneath. Oh, That's the bralette is meant to be seen. It's not meant to be hidden. The bralette. Peekaboo. And then you can't go wrong. Right. With a floppy hat, right? Yes. With any of this stuff. Easy. Easy summer style. See, you you can't, so you, I come in here and I feel like, oh, this is totally doable. I, this is great. I go home and then I cry. Okay, but this is why we seriously need to do a closet <laughs> evaluation for you. I'm going to show you a picture. <laughs> it's really bad. Okay. I mean, 10 pieces for summer, people. This is easy. I can totally do this. Good. Okay. Let's, we need to get you an outfit now. All right. Well, let's, all do, right, it. let's do it. Good advice. I'm going to make note of all of that. <laughs> for you. <laughs> all right, so volunteering. Uh, on today's show, a big focus on volunteering. We, I mean, we always like to talk about people that are doing great things in the community and, uh, and around the world. And on today's show, we've got a couple. Uh, w. Brett Wilson, people probably remember him from the Dragon's Den. Yeah. Um, he's owner of Global Fitness here in Kelowna. And philanthropist. They, philanthropist. And amazing guy. Really fantastic. He was at the Giving Back at Breakfast event held for the Kelowna Community Food Bank. And the West Side Kelowna. And the West Side yep. uh, Food Bank. And wow, what a, what a, what a great guy. Great and turnout. Great turnout, people helping out. The, the, the food fight challenge that they announced is going to be four businesses battling it out to see who can bring in the most food in a set amount of time. So that's going to be exciting. And there was already a, a big um, bunch oh, of food whole, donated whole there. Oh, of food there, right? And uh, I got a chance to sit down with Brett and uh, just talk about his life in philanthropy and also talk about kind of the struggles he went through because sometimes being successful can come with a cost. And for Brett, is, he's had some health costs and some um, personal costs. Yeah. And he's very um, forthright about Amazingly it, honest. Amazingly open about it, yeah. And he's just such a good speaker. So yeah. let's... Uh, you get to sit down and talk to him. I get to stand up and point the camera. Doug was my cameraman for the day because who else would get up at seven in the morning to go to breakfast to film? So thank well, they, you, Doug. I got, got breakfast from the boat. That's worth <laughs> that's worth the price of admission. The three elements of empowerment, and that is a lifelong learning program that each of you can undertake by choice, and that is the study of marketing, the study of philanthropy, and the study of entrepreneurship. <laughs> finally got a, set, a chance to sit down. It's been a very busy morning for you. Been here for about three hours and uh, about an hour of it on stage, but the most important thing, I was here to help celebrate and raise awareness for the Kelowna Food Bank. And what's your role there? Well, there's a couple of different roles, I guess. One is we're doing this event in Global Fitness Tennis Courts, and I'm the owner and uh, promoter, if you will, of Global Fitness. And second, Global Fitness has a long-standing relationship with um, with the Kelowna Food Bank. And then third, the two of them asked me if I would give a talk on philanthropy this morning. So it all tied together beautifully for me. And what do you know about philanthropy? <laughs> <laughs> well, it starts with probably having received a few things from a philanthropic uh, perspective as I was growing up. Uh, some bridge loans at university trying to make things, uh, make ends meet. Uh, but obviously over the years I've developed a fair affinity and uh, a thought process around charity where I call charity an incredible opportunity not an obligation. Earlier in the speech he said that um, he wanted to spank Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> well and that's in the context and so to put context around that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to just make it. He's going to spank Justin Bieber. Yeah, go ahead. I said I would like to spank <laughs> Justin Bieber because he's wasting his brand which to me is wasting an opportunity to do good and one of my ideas for him would be why don't you do a video, a 30 second, one minute video every week that can only be bought on a download basis for 10 cents and it only lasts for two days mm -hmm. and so if you want to see the Justin Bieber video you got to spend 10 cents. Well 10 cents times 10 million, 50 million, whatever his numbers are is incredible and he could start having his charity of the week and again I'm just thinking of things he could do with his brand as opposed to getting into egg fights with his neighbors and and getting drunk and driving racing cars in strange places mm -hmm. and the person I held out is one of the true truly great citizens of the world is Angelina Jolie for the way she's using her brand to change the world. Right, and now when you're, when you're seeing what the work ethic of, I mean, the new, the new generation is very entitled and they, they, it's almost like they think that success should just be given to them. How do we encourage them and, and you know, help them follow in the footsteps 
of people like yourself who, you know, did the work, put the time in, mm -hmm. and had the work ethic to be able to achieve what you achieved. I don't think there's a more offensive value, if you want to call it that in someone, than a sense of entitlement. Um, whether it's by by race or by history or by birth, any sense of entitlement, I think, is uh, is arrogance that's absolutely wasted. And I happen to believe that I've never met an entrepreneur who is suffering from entitlement. I've met many suffering from empowerment. And that's why I speak often about why I think that if everyone was to take the time to study marketing, entrepreneurship, and philanthropy, and how those three things blend together in life, that's empowering, period. With success, it, a lot of people have a really hard time balancing and, and knowing that, you know, what you said about your daughter, you said her value is now, her success is measured by the, the size of her smile. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Because if you could give your advice to the Brett Wilson from, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, what would you, what would you tell him? It'd be really one about thinking about how you would define success. Where do you want to be in terms of what's your life look like? And if it's purely financial, be prepared to let go of family and friends and your health, if that's all you care about. Mm -hmm. And so the strong element of that message is that there's more to life. Um, than and stuff. It, than stuff. Because stuff, by the time you have a lot of stuff, it owns you. And oh, you yeah. spend all your time managing your stuff, not your family and your relationships that count. It and becomes uh, an obsession. Oh, for many. Mm -hmm. No, again, I li and people, you've know, got to pay your bills, you've got to have a place to live, you've got to wear some clothes. So all those things are fine. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I actually find um, some of the world's uh, focus on these, um, you know, the three and five and $10,000 purses and the $10,000 jackets, I find that obsession reprehensible when mm -hmm. you think about the inequalities in the world. Uh, do I wear nice clothes? Do I have a large wardrobe? Yes, I do. But there's three levels above what I do that I could afford, but I have no desire to go near. Sometimes I think like, okay, well, how, how can people sleep at night in, with having access, knowing that there's people that are really suffering that don't even have enough money for a meal? Yeah, there's, there's an element of blinkering that people just can't, you can't change the lives of everybody, and so people go, well, then I just give up. And I happen to take the opposite approach, which is doing something for the world is a benefit. Mm -hmm. And as you start to appreciate it and feel how good it is, is to change the world for the benefit of a family or a, or a cause or a young girl, young boy who needs some help, uh, you start to realize just how much more there is to life than accumulating. What losses have you experienced in terms of wh when you were, you know, chasing and, and uh, like climbing up that ladder and to success? Well, I literally walked away from the relationship that I should have had with my wife and, uh, and I didn't even take the time to properly build a relationship with my children. So I just, I just wasn't there. I mean, I'd be at work, you know, six and a half days a week. Uh, now it was going well. The business was building and all those things looked good. And, uh, but there came a point where I looked back and went, whoa, none of this looks as good as I thought it would. So what was that defining moment for you where you, you, you woke up and realized, wow, I, I need to put this in perspective and, and, and start building my relationship with my children? Well, some of it was the work obsession, some of it was getting angry at one of my kids for telling someone I wasn't home, and when I challenged her, she said, but you never are. Just little comments like that. Um, cancer, you know, going through cancer round one, I've been through it twice, but cancer round one was an amazing opportunity. And I sometimes say that cancer might have saved my life because I took the time out of this treadmill that I was on, uh, which might have been a treadmill, it might have been a death spiral, the toilet spiral, as I call it. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to rethink all of that as I was going through cancer treatments and realized, you know what, guess what? I didn't read all the three papers today. And my life's complete. I didn't return all my emails today, and my life is complete. So it, it just gave you a chance to reload. I mean, I, mean, I was always at the, at the high school, you know, the, the dance or the, uh, the graduation or the, the parent-teacher interviews. I did all the obligatory moments, mm -hmm. but there weren't a lot more. And so once I divorced, I uh, turned out that I loved traveling, and my kids hadn't really traveled much. They wanted to travel, and so that was my point of differentiation was spending time <laughs> literally 24-7. Yes, yeah, so we saw a lot of the world, and it just gave me a chance to, for them to get to know me and me to get to know them. Okay, have you read the book um, The Compassionate Samurai? I've heard of it. No, I haven't. Okay, so the whole concept of it is basically, because many people associate success with, you know, stomping on other people to get to the top. 
The compassionate samurai, the samurais, they are warriors, but they still have the seven virtues like honesty, loyalty, integrity, mm -hmm. respect, and those things. Um, and from a business perspective, is that possible in North America to, to you know, have a certain level of... Um, By being compassionate on occasion, you might miss a piece of business, but I'd rather deal with someone who's compassionate than not. I still tell the story every once in a while of one of our competitors, uh, a legendary deal maker, used to say to his staff, if you see a competitor in a pool drowning, you don't get them a life jacket, you get a garden hose, run it down their throat and turn it on. <laughs> and, you know, we kind of celebrated that going, yeah, that's about competing and that's how tough you are. Then I got thinking, you know what, I don't want that guy's son anywhere near my daughter. I don't want people with those values in my life. Mm -hmm. If competition at the sake of winning and the sake of killing literally your competitors is how you want to run your business, I don't want to be a competitor of yours. And well, I certainly don't want to work with you. My success in business has almost always been with partners. You know, I'm, sole, I'm an entrepreneur, so I do a lot of my own things. But a lot of what I do is with my partners. So we co-invest and we do things as a partnership. And I enjoy that enormously. But I'm working with people who are like-minded, who don't question doing charity work in support of brand in terms of building out a business. And how do you be a, a compassionate um, business person without being a pushover? Oh, I don't think there's a moment where you have to be a pushover and still be compassionate. Compassion is about leaving people with their dignity, respecting the views and intelligence of others, and maybe not grinding out the last dollar on every deal. Mm -hmm. But somebody like yourself, I'm sure because people know that you are part of the Dragon's Den and that you have access to being able to help people. So how do you filter the people that you know really need your help? Well, frankly, in my life now, it's 100% filter. I just can't take on any more new yeah. businesses. There's a few things that slip through that are related to my core causes around, you know, charity work, mental health, um, bullying, things like that. Mm -hmm. Those might slip through the crack to be looked at, but the reality is the bulk of my time is spent working on cleaning up the life, the complexity of the life I have now. Most everything I own that requires a meeting mm -hmm. is for sale. Right. So that I can then choose entirely where I spend my time. Right, because I know with a lot of people that are successful, they, I mean, n they never get left alone. When it, you no. You don't have that experience? Well, no, I'm literally, <laughs> and pestered's the wrong word. I'm approached regularly yeah. is probably the best way of putting it. Uh, but I've given up on responding in a timely manner because you can reach me on my website, you can reach me on Facebook, you can write me a letter, you can send us a package. Uh, that stuff just stacks up by the box. And then really people get upset that I haven't responded to their unsolicited letter. <laughs> um, you know what? I haven't even looked at it. Yeah. Well, I sent it to you two months ago. Yeah, I don't actually read my mail. Like what do you mean you don't read your mail? <laughs> well, I, I don't because I actually want to spend some time with my kids. So people are somewhat, for the most part, they're very understanding. They would like a response. Well, I guess my understanding is they often approach other business leaders or dragons and get no response. Mm -hmm. So when I take the time to say, sorry, just too busy, Brett, they appreciate that at least I got back to them. I think people have this, th they don't uh, understand that there's, you know, you have a life. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand where people develop a thought that, they, that there's an expectation yeah. that I should do business with them. Yeah. I, you know, someone came to me today who's written me three or four times and said, I've rephrased it so that you'll respond to me this time. Mm. <laughs> no, I just, frankly, it's 100% out. I mean, it's Global yeah. Fitness I'm building, and I've got my product or my business over in the West Bank. At, um, we call it Prairie West, which is where Fabricland is. I'm building out that site, so I'm developing it. But I'm developing it so I don't need to think about it. Right. You know, I'd sell it if someone wanted to buy it, but my real goal is to optimize it. So I'm spending time on things that I've got. Like, I could spend all my, like, I'd be here for the next two weeks just working on my deals right. and not take any outside meetings, anything else. But as it is, I've only got a day. He's busy, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for actually taking the time to sit and talk with us. We'd love to have you on our show at the Ver Variety Show. Do you have any talent? Can't sing, can't dance, don't smoke dope, and I don't drink. I'm, you're right. I'm as boring as it gets. I, well, I, yeah, I don't do most of those things. <laughs> I, I, th I like to think well, I can. Sing. I sing in the shower. Don't make me sing. Mm. Um, what kind of comedy do you like? Oh, I love, I love improv. But I think the finest form of comedy is self-deprecating humor. Yes. I'm not a fan of, for example, the Mike Bullard style of kind of picking on his audience mm -hmm. and you kind of bully the audience. That doesn't come no. across as funny to me. And Russell Peters can cross the line quite quickly as well. But I think Russell Peters is one of the great comedic geniuses as well. So there's a, there's a line. I absolutely love comedy. And if I had a talent uh, that I could build or exploit, it would be to do stand-up. 
Well, why don't we challenge you to do stand up one time of your life? Some year I will do that. <laughs> I'm calling him out. <laughs> hey, I did stand up at the um, comedy store in LA. Get out. Yes, you did. Right across from the W? Um, the on W. Sunset? Yep. I've been there. Have Kitty you? Corner from the, it was the first and only comedy store I've ever been to in LA. And I'd go back in a heartbeat. But, well, uh, you know what's funny? I love comedy. Yeah. I'm close friends with like Caroline Ray. Okay, the yeah, yeah. Sabrina the Teenage yeah, yeah, Witch. Yeah, yeah. So Caroline is one of my best friends from a chance meeting at an event, and she's asked me to open for her. Oh. And this is name dropping at its finest, but I actually stumbled into Ricky Gervais' world, and I've met with him a couple times in London. And one of the thoughts we had was to do a charity fundraising tour in Canada where I would open for him, but the goal would be that I would do my work based on what he taught me. Then he looked at me and said, but I'm not going to teach you right. I'm going to screw you up. I <laughs> so we had love some fun with him. That. So I think the British version of The Office, brilliant. Oh, I love, I absolutely love that kind of humor. It's that, like, it makes you squeak. Yeah. Well, no, no, Mr. Bean, the biting humor yeah. of the Brits, the, uh, my website's based on Monty Python. Yeah. There's absolutely no question. I, I knocked it off. People well, say, well, you knocked it off. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Anything else? <laughs> to get you on our show um awesome well if you want to use those contacts at all to get them to come to canada have some wine and a tour and put them up at the delta grand you just give me a call well caroline does this as a business and she would come in a heartbeat if you could hit what she needs and she's pretty generous with her time we'll hit what she needs you just tell me what she needs and we'll get her here <laughs> awesome now any final advice for people that are entrepreneurs that are you know getting in this because it seems like it's the thing to do these days is to be an entrepreneur um how do, what do you what does it take to be a, a successful entrepreneur there's a perception that entrepreneurs are risk takers and i like challenging that by saying that entrepreneurs in my world generally view risk differently so it's not like they're going to vegas rolling the dice and getting a, an adrenaline rush seeing whether or not they're going to make the flip or the coin or the or the number but rather they bet on themselves. So they might have delusions about what they're capable of doing, but they don't view what they're doing as highly risky. They view what they're doing as logical, the right thing, the next extension. So number one is the, um, if you will, the evaluation of risk. And then number two is following up with passion. Step into whatever you're doing. And passion means understanding your competitors, understanding your clients, understanding where they've been and where they're going. And I'm talking about both your clients and your competitors. And then there's a sense sometimes that because the market is so large, that it'll be no problem building out the business. Well, reality is there might be 10,000 people changing that, chasing that 1% of the market that you're chasing. So the cost of, acqui of acquiring market share might exceed your fondest nightmares. Thank you so much, Bye, Brett. <laughs> Great guy, great insights. The book is fantastic. You should really mm -hmm. pick it up. I, I, I mean, I got one at the breakfast. I've read some of it today. But uh, just amazing insights into what it means to be successful beyond the, the money. The best quote I got from his speech was he was talking about his daughter's measure of happiness is now how big her smile is, right. not how big her checkbook is. Yeah, that's fantastic.